Okay, welcome to Fix Your Content Day 2023. Um, we are going to be talking in this session about improving accessibility with Blackboard Ally. And our presenter today is Mike Taylor. Um, so throughout the day, we've got a few different events going on. This is the first of three. We've got another one coming up after this. Um, the link is in your email for that one as well. And that is on PDF accessibility. And then we have our office hours this afternoon from one to four um, where you can come and get help um, either in our center or online on Teams. Um, and that information was provided in today's email welcome as well. Um, so without further ado, Mike Taylor. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, welcome to our workshop today. Uh, we're going to be talking about Ally course reports and the Ally accessibility score and how to access that stuff in your Blackboard courses. Um, advance the slide. So yeah, here's my uh, slide. Uh, my name is Mike Taylor or Michael Taylor. I'm an instructional support specialist for the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at Northern Illinois. So there's my email and uh, phone number. Um, you know, my main role here at NAU is to support faculty with their teaching. So teaching with technology, teaching with Blackboard, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions anytime um, uh, when you're preparing a course or when if you're having technical issues with Blackboard, you can also reach out to the department here, the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning anytime. We have a diverse staff of people with different backgrounds in pedagogy, um, instructional design, instructional technology. So so we're here to help faculty. So feel free to reach out to our department anytime you need assistance. Um, so I just want to plug this a little bit. Um, uh, the Blackbird Ultra Course View is coming to NIU. We've been actually, some of our faculty have been using it for a few years now, but we're working with all faculty to update and convert their courses to um, Blackboard Ultra. So we do workshops on that, but again, you can set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our faculty, or sorry, one of our staff here to help you work through that. And um, we also have an online um, course called the Ultra Transition Academy, which we run every semester. Um, we just started our summer version, so that one is closed, but we also have a self-paced course, so you can find that information on our website. And, and if you have questions about it, like I said, just reach out. This is a lot outside the scope of what we're doing today, but I just wanted to point that out. We're going to be looking at mostly Ultra courses today, but I will show an exa so examples in the original course view. Um, I guess just by a show of hands, how many of you are currently using the Ultra course view for your courses? OK, great. Great, thanks. OK, so here's here's kind of a rough agenda for today. I um, just want to cover we did our welcomes. I'm going to show you some resources and we can get if you have any questions about those, I'll go back to those. But uh, we'll be looking at the Ally course report and the accessibility score, and then we can look at some examples in original course view and also some examples in the ultra course view. I'm also hoping that some people will volunteer, so um, it'd be great if if one or more of you want to sh to share your um, your course report. This could be for an upcoming course or a past course. Um, and then we can look at some different. If well, as time allows, we can look at some different things that come up in that course report and how, how to correct them. And then uh, we should have some time for some general questions, but feel free to you know ask questions as we go and. Um, you can raise your hand or we have a pretty small group, so just feel free to to turn on your mic and, and ask a question, but sometimes raising your hand just helps me see that people have a question. I'm going to check the check. Something just came through on here. OK, never mind. That was a different chat log. OK. I have a question. OK, go ahead. Sorry. Will the uh, view that we're the report view that we're looking at in courses also apply to the organization? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, it should apply to organizations as well. Yeah, the the ally tool is um, kind of like a global extension to Blackboard and it, it shows up in a few different places in Blackboard, so it should be in any any sort of any courses, shells or organizations. There's and um, but yeah, if that's something you're not seeing after we go through things today, then we could talk and see maybe what what's going on on your on your particular organization. So yeah, this is just our what this is part of the welcome email. I'd recommend, you know, if you, you should have got an email this morning in which you registered and it has our agenda for today and some some basic stuff. So like kind of the reason for today is we want to increase accessibility in our courses. Um, today is like a special day that's been reserved for that called a Global Accessibility Awareness Day. There's a link there. Um, I have the link on the next slide that, to that page if you want to check it out. And uh, we're just participating in conjunction with that and an anthology blackboard um, as well to help bring awareness to accessibility and then how what tools do we have here at Black, at NIU that we can use to improve our accessibility. So. Here are the links. Um, so the first one is for the Global Accessibility Day, and the second one is to our Blackboard Ally um, page that we have created here. So there's a lot of resources on that page. I may refer back to that a few times during the during the meeting today, but you you should have that for future reference. OK, so let me see here. I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen. Just give me a second to switch this out. And I apologize, I'm a little slower today. I'm on a different system than I usually use, so I need to figure out where everything's at. OK, so one moment, I'm going to share my screen. OK, I just want to make sure um, if somebody could come on the mic and just tell me, can you see my screen now? You should see my email. I'm going to switch over. Yeah to Blackboard Ally here. OK, so great, thanks. OK, so this was the Ally page that I referenced. This is our um, Teaching Learning with Blackboard site, and um, we have quite a few resources here. So <clears throat> if anything that we talk about today, you need to come back and refresh on, you'll probably be able to find it on this page. There's quite a few um, pages with different um, links here on the right, so you can um, follow along here. Um, So the main thing that we're going to be looking at is what's called the uh, Blackboard or Ally, uh, sorry, Ally Accessibility Score and the Ally Course Report. So let me pull up an example course here. So this is one. All right, here we go. So if I come into my course list, I'll find I'm just going to find an example course for today that we're going to look at. I've got a few different courses, but yeah, I would really appreciate it if 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 someone or multiple people today want to share their course or something and show us your course report once you see how it's done here. Um, let me pull up this. So this is um, an uh, this is a, an ultra course, but let me pull up an original course first, just because I think some people are probably still using original. So if you're using the original um, course view, your course is going to look like this. And what you want to do is you'll want to go to your left navigation and go down to course tools, and you should find the accessibility report here. And when you click on the accessibility report, it's going to bring up the uh, this this uh, dashboard here, which gives you some information about your overall. So this is your overall course score, so clearly this shell needs some work. It's only a 52%. I just want to point out that this is not an actual course, so give me a break, but no, I'm just kidding around. Um, but uh, this was based on an older course that a colleague of mine had developed and. And it shows your overall score here, and then you can see the different types of documents that are are being flagged here for for um, improvement. And you can scroll down here and look at the remaining issues. So one thing I want to 
just warn people, don't get overwhelmed by this. You may see a lot of, depending on how big and how many you know pieces of content your course has, you may see a lot of these. So you can list it in, in um, what they have a severity rating here. And we'll see a little bit more about that um, as you as we look at a, a, a an example, but here you'll be looking for this this little meter that shows um, the um, the level of the course. Uh, let me pull that one page back because it kind of gives a example here. So so this is how they how this meter works. It goes from red to green, and it's it's kind of like low, medium, high, and perfect. Um, the other thing I'll point out is sometimes it's really difficult to get a file to be 100%. I've had a few faculty get really frustrated that they can't get that like last one or two percent out of the document. Sometimes the the issue with the document is a structural one that's really difficult to fix and it may not um, really impact the end user that much. But so so just cut yourself a little bit of slack if you can't get it to a particular document to 100 percent and if and again if if it's something that you need don't understand as it's something you can let us know about and we can try to help you as well um let me go back to the course now so another th another thing here is you can go to your content tab so this will show you um, all of the documents by name in the course and you can see what type of document it is and what score it has. So here's a few different uh, things. So I'm not going to talk too much about PDF documents today because in the next hour, Amanda's going to be covering that in more detail. But this first one that comes up here is a PDF file. So let me click on that. So when you click on the actual document, it's going to pull up a preview of the document. So you can kind of see what's in this document. And then you this is a PDF file, so. And then it, when you look over here, this is going to give you more information about what's going on with the file. So in this case, the PDF is untagged, so um, that's that's the problem that it's detecting. And so you may not know what that is. So the nice thing about this tool is it gives you a. Um, a definition of what these problems are, so if you click on the what what this means, it's going to open up and it's going to explain that um, that what what the problem is. And so PDF tags are hidden labels that clarify the structure of the document. So untagged PDFs do not contain any of this information and can cause content to be misinterpreted. This is especially important with screen readers and stuff. These types of 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 metadata around the document helps the screen reader. Uh, and 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 other accessibility tools perform their job better. So that's why you would want to fix this so that people that are viewing this document in a non traditional way or not the way that you may have created it can actually still um, still get the content out of the document. Um, and then here under this, it usually will give instructions. There are a few examples I'll show that don't have instructions, but um. Here is what it's suggesting to do. So in this case, it needs to be put in a, in a document that can be edited. So again, it, since it's a PDF file, sometimes PDF files can be a little trickier to edit because they don't open up in some of the Word and PowerPoint, PowerPoint, you know, Microsoft documents. But there are ways to edit PDFs. So and again. Amanda's is going to be talking a little bit more specifically about PDFs, but I just wanted to use this as an, as an example to show you the interface. And then the nice thing is when, when you have your edited version, well, if you clean it up and get get it, you can download it or to upload it directly here in this box and it will replace the old document for you. So that's a really nice tool because then you don't have to worry about a bunch of different versions of the document on your website. This will remove the old version and replace it with a new version. So I'm going to close this out. So yeah, so let me just reiterate this. So for for your original course view, you're going to come in and you're going to find this under your course tools and accessibility report. And that's that's how you get to it. So now let me show you an example in an ultra course. 
And before I move on, any questions about the original course view that that makes sense to everyone? OK, feel free to ask questions as we go along. OK, so here is here's uh, an uh, ultra course and you can basically do the same thing. Uh, you come down on this left navigation, you look for books and tools. And you want to view the course and institution tools. The first tool is the uh, accessibility report, so you click on this and it'll it'll take you to the same interface. So this this is a a bigger course has a lot more documents in it and you can see all these different um, different documents. This this course is doing a little better. It has an overall score of 85, so that's that's good. But um, there's there's definitely some documents in here and some files in here that could probably be improved. I want to show you one other thing. This is a slight difference in the ultra course view. So if you're in your ultra course and you go to I think it's under this one. Nope, it's under course information. So if you go to an actual document, so for example, I'm going to go to the course syllabus here. So when I open this course syllabus, there is a downloadable file. Sorry, I think I picked the wrong example. This one is not the, uh, this one is embedded in the thing or I'm sorry, embedded in the document here. So the accessibility score isn't showing up. Um, sorry, I'm see if I can find the one. I have a few different courses that look very similar, so sometimes it's hard to sort out which one. Anyway, there in Blackboard, you may see the little meters um, right next to the course um, content. I'm looking for an example, I'm sorry. I thought that was the one, but I might be. Am I in the wrong shell? Don't test the shell. Anyway, I'll sh we'll see an example of this when when we do a live one. So I still think it's it's a lot easier if you're doing, especially if you're doing multiple documents. Um, it's going to be easier to find them through the course report like this. But if you're working on like one document at a time, you may you notice that one or more has issues. So let me pull this up again. And um. Let's look at a couple examples that I pulled up. OK, so one one thing that may come up. Is. You may have there it is, so this is a friend of ours, uh, Dan Cabrera, former um, he formerly worked with us over at Seidel. He's still teaching at NIU though, so he's still still at NIU, but here is his image that he put in his course and you'll notice that it says it's 25% and the problem is. It says the image is missing a description. So if you have images in your course, you can. Um, you can actually add the description right here. And I'm going to put I'm just going to put. His name. Now I got to remember how to spell his name. Sorry. I think that's right. It's probably not though. Sorry, I'm on the spot, but anyway, um, we can add this description directly to the document. And it says oops, so I'm not sure why I got an error there, but maybe it's because I had it loaded earlier and it wasn't. Um, it kind of like it might have. Uh, timed out there. But in theory, that should have allowed me to. Should have allowed me to update the image in real time. Let me try that one more time because it should have it should have worked. Yeah, unfortunately at this in this tool, there isn't a way for me to search for that image directly, so I got to. Remember it was um, so it's these tend to be in order of. Um, of. Um, how low they are, it's so it has the lowest ones at the beginning, so so let me I remember it was 25%, so I'm going to scroll into there it is. This should be it. Hmm. 
it's not loading at all now. Hopefully we're not having like a Blackboard problem today. That would be bad timing. Well, everybody is in there fixing things. So that might, right, right. Might, might be happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, of course, this is going wrong, you know, in real time. Um, let me try a different different one. Maybe we can come back to that. Um, so here, here's an, another example. So this this one is a document that was uploaded, and this is mostly just text here, and it's it has a 99% score, but it has um, a link that's missing text. So you can click on that to see what it means, and it, it means that there's the link, there's a link somewhere in this document, so we can look through it and we'll find the link. And see this, so this this one of one, so it's showing you down here that this, there's there's a link that's missing text. I have a feeling based on the context of this, this might just be a, kind of almost like a typo in the HTML. Um, because this this link has text, but this, this doesn't. But if, but you can here either remove the link or you can add text to the link. Now I'm not, I'm not going to try to do it because I have a feeling it's going to it's going to break again. So let's just but this is an example of how how you, you would find this error and then um fix it. Like I said, this is might actually just be pointing out some some uh HTML issues because there's no link here. Usually it would be around an actual link. So there's probably just a typo uh, that was created. So this helps you find things like that as well. Let me see. So yep, that one is still gone. Pull up another. So here's another example where there's a, a link with no text. And here's here's another one. So this one actually um, you have an email link here. And um, so this one you might actually want to add text to. Mike? Yeah. I have a question about that. Is, it, is that just picking up on perhaps there is an extra space at the end of that text that it's that is linked, but it's saying it's mm -hmm. it's not got text because it's it's got a, an additional space? I don't think it's just a space. It's probably how the HTML is formatted on the page. So usually an HTML uh, element will have an end tag. And so we could go and look at this actual document because we need to figure out like what's wrong with it. Um, so in this case, you, this tool may not, you may not want to correct it with this tool because it's not, it doesn't seem to be an actual link. So. I think this in these cases that came up in these last couple of cases, these are just a, a HTML. It could be a space, but my guess is it's a it's an a unresolved tag that's that was put in. A, a lot of times when you create um, content with the what you see is what you get editor, the the HTML isn't always perfect. So this is another example where if you're getting like 96 score or a 99 score and it's showing this stuff and you can't fix it in the tool. Um, it's just because the tool doesn't allow you to do specific HTML clean, cleaning, and we don't expect faculty to be able to do that on every document. I mean, it, it could be extremely tedious if you had to clean up the the HTML. Um, since we're yeah, having I'm, some. I guess I'm oh, just wondering what kind of effect that that would have on a is it is it a screen reader issue that that the yeah. hidden HTML would be coming out in, or like would that would this be a a big issue to correct, or how would yes. that adversely affect somebody? Well, something like this in this case would probably just it would probably the screen reader would probably just make a reference to a link, but it would say no, it wouldn't have any text in that link. Okay. Um, if you had an actual link that didn't have the text. It it might just read out the the actual link text instead of the alternative text that is like what it's intended to be. So in this case, it would be Dan Cabrera's email is what the context of this is. But it may just say D, you know, D C A B E R A at N I U dot edu. So yeah, it this is yeah. So this is the kind of thing that can trip up um, a screen reader. 
I'm not I've not experienced this because I don't I don't have um, have any issues with that. But my guess is that people are probably used to those kinds of little things in their tools, but it could be distracting, especially if you have them all over the place, you right. know, because it just messes up the flow of the information. So sure. thank you. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about this tool, because you probably would have never found that um, by yeah, I mean, it would take you for you'd have to go go through every document and this is a lot of these um, things are created in what's called what you see is what you get editors. So you don't even see the code. And even if you could read the code, you wouldn't know how to correct it. So this is kind of helping you sort out what things are priorities and what things. You know, are not priorities. So these were some kind of low low priority ones. You can see the score is kind of high, whereas if you get into some more. Um, messed up documents that need help. You'll see you'll see the score will be much lower and it'll have more recommendations. Let let's see here. Um, let's see what time is it? 1030. OK, so we're doing good on time. Um, sorry about this glitch. Let me try uh, something a little different here just to see if this stuff's going to going to keep. Giving us trouble. I'm going to open up a different course that I have. Yeah, I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a course that I created that has basically no content in it. There it is. OK. So this this has I just created one document, so if you're not as familiar with Ultra, there's something in Ultra called a document and this this language can be a little confusing because we call you typically call PDF files sometimes documents and Word documents documents, but this is a, a specific type of file in Blackboard. Um, when you create when you create um, something in Blackboard, one of the options is to create a document and what it what a document is more or less is just like sort of like a, a web page that you can customize and put in your course so you can add all kinds of content to it. You can add like images, you can add text. So one of the nice things about the ally tools when you add content through this tool. So this is what I was referring to as a what you see is what you get editor. This is the text editor here. So whatever you type in here sort of gets converted into code so that it formats properly. Like if you use these, you know, text formatting tools or space formatting tools, there has to be some kind of markup language that allows it to 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 format correctly, but you don't see that. So um, that's why I, I was mentioning it might be tricky to fix some of these things because you can't go into the code very easily with the what you see is what you get editor and find the problem anyway. But um, if you notice up here in the Ultra Course View, you do get um, accessibility scores up here for uh, for these these text areas. So as as we type something in here, you'll see that the um, the score doesn't change. So one of the nice things about the these what you see what you get editors is they are trying to make the text accessible from the get go, so it's tagging it properly and things like that. But let's say we put in. Um, let's put in a link, so so I'm just going to put a link into the. CITL website. And then I'm going to name this uh, NIUCITL, so that'll be what what displays. And I'm going to put a space here. So so far this is happy. It's not it's not detecting any errors. This this is running in real time and it should it should show problems. Um, now let's let's try something a little different here. So let me edit this link. And let's remove the link text. And if I save it, it should this should be a problem now. 
but maybe it, maybe it's okay with that. Okay, so it didn't seem to mind that there isn't link text here, so we'll check the accessibility report in a moment to see if it if it pulls it up, and then let's add um, an attachment here. I'm going to attach an image file. So this this is what you might call um, this. Is, so the one distinction with images is that there are substantive images, like images that contain content and information, and you usually want to have some kind of alternative text to describe that image. But then you also have images that are more or less decorative, and they don't serve much of a informational function other than like aesthetics or or some kind of just it just adds some visual element. So in this case, I'm uploading an image that's pretty much what I would consider a decorative image. So I'm going to I'm going to check this uh, box for it and um, I'm just going to set it to view only. So this is going to put the image in the document here. And um, now I'm going to save this. So let's see. OK, so after you save it, the accessibility score disappears from up here. And if we go back to the content, we can click on this document here. And um, now you can see the accessibility score here says perfect. So and I think that is because and you can click on this to view the accessibility score. So since it was marked as decorative, it doesn't expect there to be any um, any alternative text for this image. So now let's add it. Let's add an image. I'm just going to add the exact. I'm going to add the same image. Sorry, I got to go back to. So let's create another um, content area here. And I'm going to attach the image again. This time I'm not going to mark it as decorative. And I'm going to remove the alternative text and let's see what we get now. Save it and let's see what score this comes up with now. So I'm going to leave this and let's come back and take a look and see if it if it updated. OK. All right, did I click the wrong one? Because it's, it's still saying it's it considers this to be decorative, even though I didn't mark it as such. So that may have just done it um, automatically because I didn't include um, I didn't include the alternative text. Or so, it's because related, it's the same image. It's the same image, it's so just, it's recognizing it as the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. All right, so let's see if we can um, edit this one then. Yeah, so let's see here. I'm going to remove this one and let's remove this one as well. Just OK, so when I um, clicked on that garbage can it actually removed it removed the um description that it because it had marked it as decorative so that was in place of the description so now um i know these aren't hats but i'm just going to put hats there's this um so now all of a sudden it goes back to perfect so so that's the other thing too it's not necessarily going to correct the description like if you put the wrong description in it, I don't think it knows that so just just be aware of that too you may have images that have poor descriptions or inappropriate descriptions um, so that'd be something you need to check manually but this does give you as at least gives you a chance to discover if an image is marked as decorative or has it has a description and then you can review it from there okay so it does seem like the tools working a little better so let me see if I can go back to this example let me just take a moment while I'm resetting here. Any any questions at this point or anybody want to share anything that they're 
I, yeah, I just typed one in the chat, actually, Mike. I was just curious, okay. when you add a um, descriptor to an image, do you need to um, preface it with something like um, image of hats or photograph of hats, or do you just put what it is? Is it already clear that it's an image? Um, or a yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, if anyone has, has more experience with this, please chime in. My understanding is that you wouldn't necessarily need to say that it's an image unless that was part of the description. So if it's like, um, for example, let's say it was a picture, a picture of a cat, you, you would say, well, is it a drawing of a cat or is it a photograph of a cat? Because that would be, give some context to what the image is and, and di differentiate them. Uh, I believe that the, the like a screen reader tool is going to see that it's an image because it's going to have image um, HTML image tags around it that tells the browser or tell or or the the reader that it's an image because it has to do right. that technically. So. But, but yeah, the description. But if you just said, but if you just said cats, would it would it then read it at, as just cats, or would the I screen so. reader say that it's an image, and then say cats? I'm just curious if sure. I like this, if the if I would need reader, to say the screen oh. reader will announce an image as an image. Mm -hmm. Okay, regard. So so if you wanted to include that it's a photograph of a cat or a drawing of a cat, you could, but otherwise you could just say cats. You wouldn't have to say image. Correct. Right, yeah. Thank the, you. Sc the screen reader should pick up on the, the meta tags, the HTML tags of what the item is and okay. tell the tell the um, user. Okay. I'm like, I'm not an expert on, on those tools. I don't use them personally. So there's there may be like customizations that people use as they, you know, learn their, what they need to know. But yeah, the, there's always, there's all this like, um, I don't know if you've looked at HTML, but everything inside of a, a document has markup language around it that kind of right. indicates what the objects are. Yes. But um, adding that alternative text is, um, also there, there's a ways to view, um, view content without images, and then the images would be replaced by the words that are in the alternative text. So that's that's another thing to keep in mind. So okay. having a short and 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 clear description is is useful. And this is mostly important when the image is of the like beyond a decorative value. Like it it's displaying some information. So it might be like, I don't know, like a graph of um, you know, the students, you know, average scores on the exams. So you wouldn't want to just say graph. Because there's like content in that image, so you might want to describe what the image actually is is um, showing. Ho hopefully that helps. OK, let's see here. All right, just to double check, I'm still screen sharing, right? Everyone can see the screen. Yep. OK, all right, so let's try this again with. Uh, another example. So let's see which course. OK, so we're in this course. So let's find something like a Word document or PowerPoint. Yeah, PowerPoints can be full of problems because PowerPoints have so much different content in them. They have pretty much always have images. They have different types of text. They may have text that has uh, one of the kinds of errors that can come up is like a low contrast error. So you may like if you create your PDFs with like blue backgrounds and then like gray text, it's going to catch you on that and tell you like, hey, this is a low contrast image. You may want to change your color schemes around so that you know it's more easily viewable by by everyone. Um, let's see. I think this was the one. So these are actually pretty pretty high. So the other thing is sometimes these these have high scores because there isn't really much um, much in here. So this is something you may see. Um, 
there, there's an item, there's no preview available, and the guidance is not available yet. So there's a few types of things. Uh, Blackboard has some information on their website about this, but there are a few types of things that just aren't getting picked up yet by Ally, but hopefully in the future, the those types of things will be part of the Ally tool. But it, it picks up most of the major major types of things, files and images and, and things that we're using on a regular basis. So, but if you see one of those, you may need to do it. Um, you may need to investigate it yourself if you think there's an issue with it. Okay. Okay, so let me just, uh, let's see here. I'm going to pull up this. So this this one is the test course. So when I pull up this one, I'm not going to see a lot of information because there's only one. There's only well, there's two here. There's an image and there's an ultra document. And if I pull up the content, it's pretty happy with these two because there's not that much there to deal with. Um, this was the course that had had more. More concerns, so so one of the things is so you may. You've kind of seen an overview of this, but now let's like what you may want to do to like make your life easier. So obviously you're not going to if you have a large course with lots of documents, you're not going to be able to fix everything. In one day, probably. Um, so the I, I think the mindset here is you just want to make in, incremental improvements over time. Focus on content that is like, you know, new content when you upload new content, check it right away to see that it's accessible or is as accessible as you can get it. That's probably a good practice so you can kind of keep your new content good and then go in and look for older content stuff that you may have been using over and over again from course to course or something that you've kind of had around to see if it's if it's uh, if something you can do about it. Um, so here it kind of gives you some starting points. So it says content with the easiest issues to fix. There's nine items there and then then this is like your 36 lowest scoring items. So you can kind of focus either on stuff that's easy and you can just kind of knock it out if you don't have a lot of time or this one would be the stuff that you'd want to spend more time on trying to get it better because it's probably going to cause issues for um for some students so i pulled up the um the easy fixes here so here's one status report jpeg this image is kind of strange i'm not this wasn't my course so i'm not exactly sure what this was probably an example of part of the course that was created as an image. And again, this image is missing a description. Um, so here, here's here, but so yeah, so this didn't come up on the other one when we were looking at it, or I didn't click on it if, if it did, but this is shows how to write a good description. So this is kind of like what um, Amanda was asking about, like, um, what types of things do you want to put in your description? So, so here a farmer standing in a field of yellow canola crops with a sign in the foreground reading grown for biofuel. So, so this image actually conveys a lot of information. It's not, it's sort of, it's, it's definitely not a just for decoration. There, there's some kind of um, content in this image that relates to the, that should relate to the te other text and in, in that this image is part of. So there, there's there it is. So this is kind of like if you had to, I guess you could think of this like if I had to describe this image in like one or maybe two sentences for someone that can't see it, like that would be what the, a good description would be for for an image like this that actually has some some important content in it. Now in this case, so this is a, a, a strange example because this image is probably so because this is another thing to keep in mind. You may find that you're using content in a, inappropriately. So like, is this the best way to share this information as a as a as a JPEG? I I personally I don't know the rationale because this like I said this course was created by a colleague of mine, so there may have been a a good rationale for this, but you may want to think about that. Is this the why has this text document been converted like this text been converted into an image? It looks like it was it's probably pulled from a different um, web web page. 
and brought in here. So that's was a quick way to share something that was on a different uh, system. But that's also something to think about when you're creating content, like are you using the appropriate tool to get this information to your students and making it accessible to all students or as accessible as possible. The other thing to keep in mind is you may want to one of the th the ideas here is you don't necessarily want to create a bunch of different versions of content for different people. You just want to make what's like universally accessible is kind of a, the idea. That's kind of the idea driving this. These scores is a sense of universal accessibility. So like most people, no, regardless of of their disability or 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 text. Uh, sorry, not text, but their their tools, the way they're viewing it should still be able to get the content. So so that's kind of the mindset behind this is this idea of universal universally designed and universally accessible content is about it, you know, do the best you can. So here's an example. Let's hopefully this one will work. It doesn't break like the last one. So we're pulling up a word document here. So yeah, so here here's a good example. So this this is one too. Uh, this document contains tables that are missing headers. Now this this is a problem that comes up. So you have uh, ta t tabular data in your um, in your document, and there's there's a way to put um, header information in these. Now I find this this can be tricky if for people to to fix, um, but uh, because you got to find find the uh, place in in uh, Word to put the header in, but this is telling you what's what's up. Um, and then he, this shows some in basic instructions. So you want to download the original document, open it in your software, and then um, put the put the headers in. But it doesn't actually. Let's see if this. Okay, here we are. So if you open it in Microsoft 2016, the two tables are missing headers. So. The other thing to keep in mind, you may have a different version of of uh, uh, Microsoft Office, so these instructions may not be perfectly correct, but the concept is there. So you may need to Google do it like a Google search or figure out how to add headers to your document. Um, again, this is this is mainly for screen readers so that it can tell the, the screen reader what the uh, the table. Um, table contents is correctly. And I'm going to assume this is going to have the same because that's the same document. So let me see if this one will work again. This was our initial image. So let's see if we can add. Um, and I'm just going to type photo. Graph. Of Dan. Let's see if this this works this time since I pulled it up. There we go. I think the last time it did just maybe timed out or there was something something weird about it, but there it goes. So now now the image has. Um, now the image has a. Uh, has a description and, and it's 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 off of this this uh, priority list. Okay, so I'm going to close this. Let's Pull that up one more time and let's see what we get. Yeah, so now we're down to these to eight items and it looks like it even took one off of there as well because that was like a low scoring item. OK, so um, I want to leave a little bit of time. Does anyone want to try this on their course? We can. We can sh you can share your screen with the rest of us if you'd like or or are there any final questions? We have about eight minutes, so I want to give everybody time to jump because if you're interested in PDF accessibility, that's coming up at 11, so make sure you uh, join Amanda for that. Uh, workshop, but we've got a few minutes here, so would anyone like to try something out? Um, maybe share an example that you've discovered. Otherwise, you know, if you 
pop into the office hours this afternoon and show us what you're working on um, or bring any questions you have so we can help you out um, in answering those those questions as you get a little more involved in this process today. I mostly wanted to ask a quick clarification question of process. So I see how to access the report and just confirming. So essentially the most efficacious way to fix our content is something you said, like if it's just a description, we can add that there, but mostly like downloading our content and editing it within its original software system and then re-adding the content is kind of the best approach. Yeah, and what I would recommend is doing it through the Ally tool itself so that it it replaces that content. I mean, you could do it manually. You could delete the content from your course and then add it back in, but this this should save you some time uh, by doing it through the Ally tool, so you don't have to do that. Because yeah, the other and the other thing that it avoids is you you won't have two versions of the content that are different all of a sudden, and you have like that forking problem now you've got the old version of the document floating around the and and a new version that that you prefer um so yeah you you're probably best off trying to use the tool but if it if it doesn't work for some reason you can do it manually you can delete the original document and then upload the new version and then check the score again at, after you upload it to make sure that you actually fix the problems and like I said, don't don't smash your head against the wall if you're getting like 96, 98 percent and you just can't get those last two percent because of some. Very particular thing it's looking at. I mean, you want to strive for that, but strive for a perfect uh, document. But like I said, I've had a few faculty that spent hours trying to fix something they never and I. I it could have been that it just isn't fixable or they just couldn't figure it out. So like I, like I said, if you really, really get stumped on something, let us know and we can see if if there's something you're missing but um i think if you're getting in the green for the most part you know your your time is better spent on things that are in the in the red than trying to get 100% if that makes sense so um i don't know amanda did you want to mention anything about the is is there sort of a competition today to see how much content we can fix or is that just for for fun, I don't. Yeah, I mean, there's technically Ally is um, Anthology Ally is having a competition for Fix Your mm -hmm. Content Day. Um, there is, I'll share the link to the leaderboard in the chat here. Um, so okay. you can see where we're at. We're actually number 44 in the leaderboard. We have 20 fixes so far today. So not great, but <laughs> we can do better, I think. But um, we've got some fixes on there. Some of the schools that are on here have zero fixes. Um, and the way that they calculate the leaderboard is um, fixes per student to make it equitable um, because there's different, um, you know, sizes of institutions and the number of fixes isn't the most important thing. It's the number of fixes per student to make that um, more equitable across the institution. So we have 15,649 students. We have 0 0.00128 fixes per student right now. So hopefully we can get that up there. We're not going to, going to beat the first place right now. They have um, 5.6 fixes per student, which is pretty great um, compared to everybody else on the leaderboard who's in the ones and zero per, like point, you know, per um, fixes per student. So we do, it is a competition, but really the most important thing is making the content accessible for all of our students, for those with disabilities and those without disabilities. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like the competition I think is, is, is just kind of, bring awareness to this. Um, my my thoughts are you this is a continuous process, so I would say spend a little bit of time on it, um, you know, each semester or maybe throughout the semester as you're finding stuff that is um, finding stuff that needs needs attention. And that's why this tool is nice because it's kind of just there for you. You don't have to do a lot of um, your own investigation. This is like feeding you the information. So so yeah, it's it's something we've had now. Like, it's a little over a, what a year and a half we've had Ally running, I think. Give or, or, um, I think we've had it for two, it two years, years, including like, our pilot because we did a semester long right. pilot. 
so yeah, so it's a fairly new tool, and especially if you're new to Ultra, this is like something you may not have seen, you, but you'll start noticing it now that you're aware of it. You'll see those little um, gauges, and and then you can always run that ally report. It's probably a good idea to, like I said, just think of this as a continuous process where you're continually improving things. And um, and then of course, if if you have any like concerns or questions about this, reach out to our department. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm going to let everyone go cause so you have time to jump over into the next meeting or whatever. Um, and other, otherwise, you know, feel free to reach out to us anytime at CIDL and um, we're here to help. So thanks, thanks for being here today. Thanks everyone and hopefully we'll see you in our next session. Both of these are recorded though, so um, if you aren't able to make the next session, then uh, we will share out the recording of both of these.